blue check marks, and carrier enforced Wi Fi offloading. This is Mac Voices. Today's Mac Voices is supported by Mac Voices After Dark. Uncensored, off topic, and always off the wall. Mac Voices After Dark is available as a benefit to our Patreon subscribers. Sign up at patreon.com slash macvoices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, Mac Voices Live is back after a week's hiatus. I'm Chuck Joyner. We are live on YouTube at youtube.com slash TV. It's 8 o'clock where I am, or about, uh, 5 o'clock on the West Coast, and whatever time that is, wherever you are. We'd love to have you come and join us in the chat room here to throw in your comments, questions, thoughts, because that's what we do. We throw in comments, questions, and thoughts to the show. Um, quick programming note before we get started. Um, it's a- April just seems to be one of those months where I'm home, uh, or I'm home less than I'm away. Um, so we will be dark again next Tuesday, the 17th, because I will be in Las Vegas for NAB. Um, but after that, then things should smooth back out. So I apologize for the, the in and out nature of things, but it just, it's just the way the schedule works this time. So since we were off, there are a lot of little topics that that I'm going to try to steer us through. A couple of significant ones. Um, usually, you know, we we have a lot and we try to dance between some of the smaller ones, and we always get hung up because if somebody wants to discuss it. So we'll we'll see how tonight goes. But let's find out who's here, and then uh, we'll we'll get off the ground. First up, uh, in the corner of the Angels, where I would sort of expect him, Mr. David Ginsburg. David, it's great to have you as always. Great to be here. To look forward to another Tuesday night here, having some fun discussion. We missed uh, we missed you last week. We're going to miss you next week too. But uh, you know, what? we'll make up for it just for tonight. Have some good 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 conversation. Well, you know, I toyed with the idea of trying to do it from either the press room or back at the hotel room, but yeah. we all know the press room would shut down in the middle of the show, and we know how hotel Wi-Fi goes, and so better just to you know have our quality up a little bit, give everybody another week off so that we can dig in the following week. Yeah, it's okay. Eric Bolden is here, uh, looking very spring-like uh, with large flowers behind him. Um, and Eric, I still, I want you to do what you did before, just reach it around where you did. And it just, I mean, it's just, it's almost is, perfect. It almost looks correct. like he's just reaching behind the, <laughs> behind that big pedal. Light so. switch is right behind the pedal. It's yeah. Oh, yeah. Good job. Good job. Jim Ray is here sporting a dub dub DC background. Jim, great to have you as always. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Ben Rathick and I were talking, I was wearing the same color shirt Ben has on today. I had it on Sunday. And so we both look like Easter eggs, Ben, it's yes. good to have you. It's good to be here, Chuck. I only copy the best. Uh, oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, joining us for his first time as a regular panelist. He's been here as a guest a couple of times, but, um, Brian Flanagan Arthurs has joined uh, the Mac voices live panel. So you'll be seeing more of him. Brian, great to have you. Thanks so much for agreeing to show up and be abused by everyone. Well, well thank you so much. And uh, oh goodness, and I hope uh, not too much abuse. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. You're if you're expecting no abuse, um, you know you're in deep, deep trouble. <laughs> uh, speaking of abuse, Jeff Gammon is here. <laughs> Jeff, <laughs> I was pretty sure that's where we were headed. <laughs> Yeah. I'm, I've learned I've learned your smooth transitions, Jeff. I lo- <laughs> you did really well. I'm so proud of you, Chuck. <laughs> Thank it's, you. Thank it, you. It's it's just such a wonderful feeling when you when you watch all, all of your your little transitiony people grow up and be able to like really nail one. So it makes me so happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that wouldn't seem to be uh, kind of low hanging fruit, but you know, <laughs> yeah, but still a good one. Oh man! So let's um, let's get off the ground here. Um, the first thing that I just want, Jeff, I wanted to ask you. I'm going to throw this link in in our chat room here. Um, 
do you still do you know I, I checked earlier today. I think you still have your blue check mark. I still have my blue check mark, in spite of the fact that the last time we were all together, we were expecting to lose them on April first. Right. And we didn't. Uh last time I checked, I still have one. I'm looking right now. And let's see. If I click on me. Yes, I still have one. Um There's what the hell? Elon yeah. promised to take it away so that I wouldn't look like uh, like I'm paying for one, and it's still there. I've well, I've heard that if you change anything on your account, then it goes away. Oh uh, well, that that would involve me actually interacting with my account. Yeah. <laughs> so it'll just what whatever happens happens. I, I've taken a very zen approach to dealing with my Twitter account. Um, I, I have not deleted it because. Uh, you delete it, and then someone else can uh, like grab your name and do with it as they please. So if that's going to happen, they they will have to take the proactive step of just taking my account from me and and letting someone else have it. Yeah, if none of us would ever think of of trying to imitate you if you gave up your name. <laughs> I I can't I can't imagine my. Actually, no. I've seen some of the posts. I guess I can't imagine it. <laughs> it yeah, yeah. Remember how how popular fake Steve Jobs was? Think about how popular fake Jeff Gamma could be. You know that that I would be okay with that because that that was done as a good natured thing. I'd be afraid now that someone would use it as like uh, like some. Uh, anti-racist, um, anti-LGBTQ, whatever kind of uh, thing, and then, and then I'd have to start well, flipping. Anti-racist tables. would be okay, right? Um, yeah, you're right. That would be okay. So, <laughs> as a racist thing, see, I, I'm so against that that in my mind, my mind just changes it to anti-racist because that's what it should be, anti-racist. Yeah. Mm. Anyhow, um, don't use my account for bad stuff, people. Yeah, really, really. Well, I thought it was. I thought that was interesting. And there was one other thing that I don't have an article for because I really haven't seen it written up. But apparently, Twitter went went ahead with their API change, and TweetDeck changed quite a bit. And frankly, I think for the better, believe it or not. So, if you haven't given TweetDeck a try, um, oh, yeah, well. you know, take a take a shot at it. Um, it does require a little bit of reconfiguration, but I pulled all my existing uh, feeds in, and now it looks just like it did, but a lot more customization options. So for what yeah. it's worth, if you still are on Twitter or want to be on Twitter, it's worth looking at. I hadn't looked at it that yet. It looks like they did what they created Dex, and it's more defined, which is nice. Yeah, yeah, wow. and, and there, are, there are a lot more options to it. So yeah, just something to think about. Um, I said we were going to go back through a bunch of things, but there's one that popped up that I think is is that Jim brought to the table. I think is very important, and so Jim, I'm going to let you run a little bit with this. This was well, from Michael Sy's blog um, about carrier forced Wi-Fi offloading. Jim, you want to you want to explain a little bit of this because this seems to be somewhat disturbing. It, it did seem disturbing to me. Now you know I'm not. Uh, uh, expert in any of this. I just know what I read on this Michael Sy post, but apparently uh, in iOS 16.4, uh, they've made a change so that your carrier, now it sounds like if you're like using AT&T, you're not going to have this problem. Um, maybe with T-Mobile and maybe with some of the smaller MVNOs, but you know, I guess some of these carriers, like they, set up um, <clears throat> Wi-Fi hotspots and will, you know, they want to, if you're around a Wi-Fi hotspot, they want you to use that in instead, um, like maybe your Wi-Fi in your house. Um, but apparently now they are allowed to force your device to prefer uh, a Wi-Fi hotspot over um, uh, cellular. So <clears throat> let's say maybe your neighbor gets this service and, and their wife, you know, their Wi-Fi modem is, you know, 
under this program of this carrier, you might be sitting in your house and suddenly all your network communication is going through your, your neighbor's Wi-Fi uh, router. Or, you know, maybe you'll be in a grocery store or Home Depot. Um, in fact, somebody mentions this happening at Home Depot. That, um, <clears throat> uh, in fact, uh, yeah. So here's somebody saying, I noticed that Home Depot was looking up locations of stuff I needed to pick up. And uh, his phone, he was in the parking lot of the Home Depot and his phone kept switching off 5G to hop on some single bar Wi-Fi that he couldn't delete or deselect auto join. Auto join. So he wound up solving it by turning off Wi-Fi, but um, that's not really a very good long-term thing. And um, so that's, that's basically my understanding of it. Um, so... I guess we'll have to see. It seems like something I haven't seen it anywhere else other than this Michael Sai post. And of course, Michael Sai is an aggregator. You know, he doesn't originate news. Um, so it's like he's quoting. It looks like it's probably all from a Y Combinator thread. So I haven't seen this in any media. It's interesting. Well, yeah, I haven't either, Jim. And it, the the post does make uh, note that this is not necessarily new. AT and T helped invent these standards back in two thousand nine. Um, but well, the difference I, I, is um, allowing carriers to force you onto a Wi Fi right. network of their choice, and uh, and not letting you take control over what network you're on. Yeah, I think that's the new thing. Yeah, Apple made why? a change. Why have I, I mean, I can't believe this is going to last for long because that just opens up so many security issues and you know, questions over what network you're actually sending information through. Well, the um, alarming so, question is, why would Apple do this? That's a very well, good question. Yeah, I, I would, I would agree. I, yeah, I mean, I, mean, I can the, understand why the carriers want to do this. Um, I mean, especially in a big box yeah. store, because I've since I've been to T-Mobile on their bands, a lot of them do not penetrate big, the walls on larger big box stores. Um, also, when you're in a crowded uh, event like a football stadium or a Fourth of July celebration, well, that what that five G bandwidth uh, gets used up pretty quickly. But um, as others have said. The, the sticky part is that they're not telling you that they're doing this. More specifically, Apple isn't telling you that they're doing this. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by our Patreon subscribers and Mac Voices After Dark. Ever wonder what happens before the Mac Voices live shows? Or what happens when the show ends or after the live feed closes? That's where Mac Voices After Dark comes in. If you are a Patreon supporter at any level, you get access to the video of our off-camera conversations. Uncensored, unedited, and always off the wall. It's a small thank you to our Patreon supporters who want to peek behind the curtain. Become a Patreon subscriber at patreon.com slash macvoices. And thanks to everyone who supports the show. So, would have... Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. I mean, a VPN would offer some protection if you have it set up to automatically connect to the VPN. I would hope. Or does that does that complicate things farther? Further. Well, farther. Most well, people don't use you to have a VPN. Yeah. 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 And uh, and I should never, uh, as an end user, be in a situation where where uh, I'm being forcibly moved off of the network that I think I'm on mm -hmm. and uh, and being on someone else's network. I mean, yes, I know I'm kind of reaching a little bit with this. Well, actually not here in Boulder because there's a lot of really tech people here. But uh, what if someone has, uh, has set up on their Wi-Fi network a thing where um, they're just intercepting all traffic? And uh, and just capturing all the data that goes through their own network, and there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to do that on your own personal network. But if you're having other people that are being forced onto your network because it's part of uh, some hotspot network, uh, now now whatever is going through your phone 
is now susceptible to uh, to this private network just intercepting all of your data. Not cool. Yeah. Uh, Brian? I was thinking about this in practical terms. You know, I use my iPhone to do banking, for example, going on the bank website or the bank app, but I always do it under cellular or under my home Wi-Fi. You know, it just sounds like this would be like the equivalent of using free public Wi-Fi to do banking, which would be nuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The other part about this, um, let's just say you're using a cellular 5G home internet like I am. Well, every so often, unexpectedly, my T-Mobile internet throttles way down. Well, I live kitty quarter from the country club. So I have to wonder if I'm part of this program and getting what I paid for throttled down. Mm, because other people are unknowingly using your network. Mm-hmm. That would be really crappy. Which m- might be one of the reasons you physically cannot turn off the Wi-Fi network on the T-Mobile hot or T-Mobile internet gateways. So could be. I got I got to think about that, Ben. So if but if if a, if a Wi-Fi network is protected. Well, okay. No, I, no, I, because I, I, what what they're doing with these managed networks is, you know, it's managed by by the carrier in this case. So the carrier could go, you know, say tell another device here, connect to this network, and mm-hmm. essentially backdoor the protection. So without a password. So it's, um, it's right. It's, so it doesn't make it a public network. People that aren't customers that carrier can't hop on. But if they're customers of that carrier, they're, you know, they've got a, essentially a back door that they can like, yeah, route him through that, through that, and 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 that will let them through. So mm-hmm. it's essentially a, a bypass to the security. Mm-hmm. I mean, hopefully that's not going to let them onto your local Wi-Fi. No, I can't I, imagine. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't even use the T-Mobile uh, Wi-Fi. I pretty much use it as a. Uh, cellular modem connected to my Eros. Right. Mm -hmm. But still, it's still the same bandwidth bucket. Do you pay for the bandwidth? Yeah. Do you you pay for uh, usage? Uh, It's $50 flat fee. Yeah, that's a T-Mobile. Okay, so so they're not going to charge they're not going to charge you more because somebody else is using it, which would be that would be very unreasonable. Yeah, they're not going to charge me more, but when I'm getting... But you're getting uh, less service, maybe. Yeah, yeah. when I'm getting 12 instead of 150... And you're close to the 5G tower. Yeah. And you also have the data caps to consider mm-hmm. because somebody may be sucking up your data without, you know, and, and you get, get charged for you're not charged in this in the well, uh, in the dollar. That's what I was there. asking. Do you have yeah, data no, caps? There's no caps for T-Mobile no. 5G. Not for T-Mobile, but for if if this is happening with AT and T or somebody else, you know that very well is possible. Well, well, first of all, what Ben's talking about, I believe, is something completely different than the story we started talking about. It's kind of almost the opposite situation. Um, that I think it might be more like people that are connecting to Ben's hardware have this so you know it could be iPhone. that that somebody you know an iphone that's at the country club thinks they're on 5g and it's hopping them onto ben's wi-fi when they didn't want to i mean the good thing is your your which in that case is apparently it, so. then turning around and sending it 5g so i'm not sure if that actually makes sense why why would they want to do that that's not you know going to help the carrier uh, I think where it helps the carrier is when the backhaul is not cellular. Um, so they're not paying for it. David, you were saying? So I said the good thing is you have Eero to, to protect your, your network. But mm-hmm. I seem to remember I did try to try T-Mobile, the home internet, as a trial. I'm not close enough to the 5G tower to get good speeds. But they, they do, if you just use their 
standalone uh, modem router, I mean, you, you still get you're still using WPA2, and you're protected. You know, someone who doesn't have a, um, an actual router, like an Arrow or Net Net or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a, it's a good device. I just yeah. like having control over oh. my network. We're, we're all oh, we're sure. all techies, and we that's what we like to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you're probably your normal person that's saying, "Oh, wow, fifty bucks for an internet," and they're just gonna plug in the T-Mobile device and go. Yeah, but but even so, David, I mean, with this this situation, I, I mean, I can, I don't see how this, I don't see how this enhances the the customer experience at all. No, mm-hmm. not with yeah, this. No, but anything, it's good for the carrier; they can save money. There yeah, you well, go. Yeah, but you know what? It's a little different because home internet's being treated as such. It's not with you know. The, I think T-Mobile, many of the carriers treat an iPhone, especially when we're using them as hotspots. You know, they you're limited on what your what your, your data capped on that. Um, but with the home internet, you're not because they've you know they're prioritizing that traffic over you know into an air different spot on on their network because uh, you know with a with a an iPhone being used as a hotspot, like I gave as an example, you know they 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 go crazy when you go over and doing five gigs and and oh wait you're gonna be you're going over on your data caps and you're, it's kind of like it's having a MiFi device. You know, I manage MiFi devices for Verizon. And you know, I'm I'm we're we're at caps of two gigabytes on some of the devices, and people go over all the time. And you know that that, that Verizon wants you to buy more, you know, more data. Uh, so there, there's a difference there when it comes to the home internet versus you know those types of devices. I don't know. It's just it's one of those things that I and, and Jim, you brought it up too, because I went specifically looking right before the show, and I didn't see this written up anywhere else. So it's yeah, either it's a big deal that nobody's figured out yet, or it's not as big a deal, because you know that they would the the the, the general tech press would be all over Apple from a privacy and security standpoint. So yeah. we'll we'll see how this plays out. Started at Reddit, so. <laughs> You know, how, how things kind of blossom from there. <laughs> yeah, good point. The Mac Voices Live panel is back next time with a new topic. General Motors' decision to abandon CarPlay and partner with Google. That's next time on Mac Voices. I'll see you then. As always, I'm Chuck Joyner. Thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.